Disclaimer. I am not a mechanic, AMP, AMT, AME. I am not a CFI, CFII. I think you get the point. If you have any questions, concerns, or etc., seek the advice of experts. I am a private pilot who owns a plane and is trying to give back to the aviation community by sharing my own experience in aircraft ownership. Please refer to your aircraft's POH as every aircraft is different. And remember, we're all in this together, so be safe out there. What's going on, everybody? So, one of the easiest things you can do to uh, save a bit of money is to do some maintenance on your own aircraft. So, I'm here at uh, Whiskey 96, 9 or 6, uh, New Kent, uh, in, well, New Kent, Virginia. Uh, at the shop and gonna dig into the plane and do an annual so uh, this is an owner assist annual I do it every year I've been doing it for the last couple years now and it's pretty cool because you get to know a lot about the plane and then also uh, you know save a bit of money in the in the side uh, plus it gives you that you know sense of accomplishment and you get a better understanding of how your plane is actually put together so what I'm going to do is basically go into the hangar there, start working on the plane, and when something comes up that's interesting or worth note or a way that you can save a little bit of uh, money or, or avoid problems, I will uh, hit the record. This is going to be a really rough video uh, sound. Who knows how that's going to go. But I think the general sense of uh, what you need to do and what you can avoid and kind of tips and tricks and that type of jazz. I think it'll be extremely helpful. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do some rough cuts there and uh, hopefully we'll learn something together. Uh, like I said, I've only been doing this for a couple years, but the knowledge that you get from actually digging in, you know, into your own aircraft is absolutely amazing. So I'm going <clears> to <throat> jump in and let's see what we can find out. Um, I picked up a really cool device that is helping me get these wonderful panels. I'm sure everybody knows these inspection panels on their plane. Piper has about a bajillion of them and so do all the other ones. They're um, basically inspection ports for those who don't know so you can take a look and see what's going on. Um, with the owner assist you can of course take a look yourself but it is um, it's the it's the inspector who gives the final thumbs up here. So uh, to reduce the cost associated to an annual, some will actually allow you to take off panels and do all that type of jazz. They go around, they take a look, thumbs up, and then you put everything back. A yeah, large um, percentage of the cost of an annual is, is all of this work associated to taking off inspection panels, seats, uh, carpet, that kind of stuff. Everything that can be done by a uh, a pilot or the owner of the aircraft, uh, private pilot that is. So, okay, um, I am pointing to these cups, so why not discuss these since they're right here. What I do is I get little pieces of tape and you can see 32, so I'll have 32 written there, 32 over here on the actual cup. These are uh, test cups, we'll call them. Uh, but any type of cups, medicine cups, anything like that will be useful uh, to keep up with the screws. You don't want to lose screws because they uh, may sometimes seat a little bit better uh, or don't need to be replaced at all. Uh, I have a whole new bag of hardware over there, uh, screws, but hey, if they're good, they're good. So 32, 32, and then up here I mark where the panel and the screws came out, 32. All right, that's the first thing. But really what I'm excited about is most of the time I use a ratcheting screwdriver, you know, one of those deals where you just kind of, well, ratchet and unscrew the screws. So, much better. <laughs> so, um, I've got one of these things. This is a Black Friday special. It's still uh, on special, I guess. It's the little DeWalt um, gyroscopic, oh, this is so cool, screwdriver. So one of the things you want to avoid with this, since you're working with aluminum uh, and these, these screws, is stripping anything out and just kind of being able to feel your way. That's why I normally use a screwdriver. However, this year I have used the DeWalt, and this DeWalt's pretty cool because the gyroscopic function I'll show you 
press this down like that kind of hums and then if you see I'm gently turning oh just kind of reacts to the way that your hand is oriented now watch this is cool I have screws like this that are oriented like so so it works like this as you would kind of figure then I've got screws on the outside of the plane does the same thing oh wait it gets even better going pointing down when I take up the carpet or panels or whatnot inside the plane press the button down ta-da I have no idea how this voodoo black magic works but it's probably the uh, single most amazing thing well I'm probably saying it today because I got it today um, single amazing thing I have gotten for maintenance on this plane so this will help me out tremendously my wrist isn't suffering and um, yeah I've been able to take all of these panels off Maybe you can see down there and behind the tire there I've got about a bajillion panels um, in, in no time it is absolutely beautiful so this is uh yeah let's make a little series of this why not for owner assist annuals this is my first tip um well second i guess uh, first would be the little cups and marking them with the tape that's pretty straightforward um but get one of these uh not sponsored or anything they didn't give it to me i just literally ran down to uh the local hardwoods hardware store and picked one of these up dewalt and it's the um, gyroscopic technology screwdriver. And this little battery has been running literally for both wings now. I've got all the panels off except for one and it's got a full charge. So I think this is gonna last pretty much the entire time. In the instruction book I read, the battery takes about an hour to charge, which isn't too shabby. And um, yeah, definitely get one of these things. If I can find a link, I'll put it down below, but this will change your life. Um, same thing with screwing them back in. You don't want to play. So this will allow you to just kind of gently step them in. So uh, again, let's make a series of this. Why not? And uh, this is the first one, uh, second one, whatever you want to call it. As I continue with this uh, owner assist annual, I'll just kind of record as we move by. Um, and note that uh, when you buy this, it just comes with the battery and the actual device here. The screwdriver does not come with these tips. Uh, these tips are also on special. You get a ton of tips for, I think, $10 is a paid form. And this is nice. Uh, it's, I think they're these, uh, they're the impact versions, but they work just as well. They gripped very nice and they're slightly extended. It's got that locking collar in there too, so this thing isn't falling out. You don't have to worry about any type of clutch mechanism or anything like that. So, anyway, I will continue to take the remaining panels off and as uh, we get to situations which are recording uh, worthy I will make sure that will get done and I guess it would make sense if I actually showed you how this works so bear with me here I'm trying to hold the phone remember what direction it goes all right so here we go Ta -da. I actually have and you know purposely going that fast but I can go as slow as I want I'll show you on this one I'll just go nice and slow there we go and then so that's it oh I, I am totally serious at all times all right so uh, so to help with uh, making sure you got some uh, non-stiction for the stiction, I, I have no idea. Anyway, seriously though, uh, LPS2, it's a uh, lubricant I use for multiple parts of the aircraft. Uh, tip number 467 for those pilots who are bad at math. Um, basically, with your little jars here, something simple to help you out with uh, the next time you uh, do this so it's nice and freed up when you try to take these one screws out is to uh, open this up or open any container that you're holding your screws in there and do it a little spray spray as everybody works little mixed hardwood cocktail and that's pretty much it so when you're putting these back in, uh, they'll go in nice and smoothly and then they'll come out nice and smoothly on their way out the next 
next time you do it next year or uh, in six months or whenever. Um, so yeah, these screws, uh, if they have any rust on them, just go ahead and chuck them. It's nice to get a hardware kit and pretty much get those on all the popular aviation sites. So these don't have any rust, so I can reuse them. If they did have any rust, I'd just chuck them in um, the little bags of hardware that come uh, in those kits. I would just replace those. So pretty, pretty straightforward, pretty easy. The, uh, the tip here is just to use really high grade lubricants um, to spray and uh, coat, these, uh, coat these with and then uh, pop the panel back in and they should get in nice and smoothly and come out nice and smoothly. So uh, on to the next step. So what you doing? I am readjusting the magnetos to mm -hmm. go back to 25 degrees before top dead center. They were off a lot last year and I adjusted them. One of them was 25 degrees. I mean, uh, 15 degrees off. So now they're just about 2 degrees off this year. So I'm going to loosen these up enough where I can turn them. So what happens when they're off? Uh, you can have a loss of power, vibration, massive mag drop. God dang it. Five hundred hours sent off to re oh my rebuild. Yeah. Or you know. Slicks like to wear out quicker than Bendixes do. Gotcha. Yeah, made the right one. Nope. Yeah, your way. Mm -hmm. Tip number, well, I'm just going to give this up, but one of the things that uh, you can take advantage of, since it's an owner assist annual, and the plane's basically taken all apart anyway, is to do some things you've been uh, neglecting for, you know, a period of time, since, you know, the plane's been around. And what I'm doing is I'm replacing this tape, as you can see, it's all cracked and nasty, and then you get down here and it's not even the same tape, I don't even know if this is... Well, it's coming off regardless, so we're going to be good to go. But just taking your time doing, you know, stuff like this, since the cowling's off, makes it a whole lot easier. Uh, this will, you know, reduce noise and blah, blah, blah. Plus, it looks a whole lot better, so I'm going to throw this tape on there and get this all looking nice. And, you know, you wouldn't want to do this separately unless you really had to. So having all the cowling off and whatnot during the annual... Plus, it's on your time, not, you know, the mechanic's time, so, uh, yeah, you're getting all this, uh, all this taken off, and hopefully it'll look pretty nice, and, well, uh, I'll, uh, do before and after, as you can see, this is the before, I've gotten a lot of it off already, um, you know, it's kind of a pain, but I guess the good thing is, since it's so old, it's, it's all cracked and whatnot, so I'm just taking a razor blade to it, so, uh, yeah. This is the before, absolutely beautiful, right? And then after is going to look even better, so stay tuned. Churn and dry. Whoa! All right. Let's see what's going to happen next. Good grief. All right, so tell us what's going on here. All right, so 
how oil circulates through your engine, there's tiny little holes on the crankshaft, and when the crankshaft rotates, it sprays oil onto the connecting rods, the back of the piston, and the cylinder walls to keep the engine cool. Now, when the oil gets into the front of the crankshaft, it has nowhere to go. Then it gets hot, and it cooks, and it turns into this sludge-like material. Um, so the AD on these engines is you have to remove the plug, Right that. Oh wow. Yep. And uh, see there's there was uh, rust on the back side. Mm -hmm. So you remove the plug and you clean all the sludge out. Then you make sure there's no pits. If there's pits, you have to do a die penetrant to make sure there's no cracks. Pits are acceptable as long as there's no cracks. So we'll clean it up, make sure there's no pits. If there's no pits, we just put the plug back in mm -hmm. but every thousand hours as you can see how much is built up it's yep. probably a good idea to knock that cap out every thousand hours and clean the sludge out of there because that can go into the engine or it just builds up in there and it just gets real nasty and can throw off the crankshaft balance causing a slight vibration mm -hmm. now the work these are bad but the worst are constant speed props because oil does circulate into the front of the crankshaft for the, to go into the prop to change pitch so there's a lot more oil under there we've seen some where only maybe half of this stick could go in that's how clogged up it was Jeez. and when people take props off they forget to clean these and they just put a prop right back on there mm -hmm. so you're gonna have and that also would cause in constant speed slow blade changes when you hit the prop governor and your prop's really slow, the sludge is blocking the flow of oil to get into the prop. Goodness. So, we're going to clean this engine, we're going to clean it out, make mm -hmm. sure there's no pits, and we put the plug back in. And he won't have to worry about this for another thousand hours. Woohoo! Alright, cool. <laughs> okay, so it looks like cleaned all the sludge, put the new cap in there. And painted it pretty. Hannah, this does look good. What'd you use to uh, keep this cap in? Oh, RTV. RTV. Orange RTV. Nice. So there was pitting in there, but. Uh, oh, yeah? Okay, never mind. <laughs> but. Uh, we the die checked and there's no cracks so we just got to do uh, a die check every year make sure there's no cracks and we should be good to go but uh, yeah there it is hold your breath for another uh, 100 hours or uh, next year and hope there's no cracks in there uh, if it does well we don't want to talk about plan b there but, uh, yeah finished product of that one i think it looks pretty good Lock washers on the inside. Because if, if you if you put the lock washer on the inside, the flat washer is against this. Mm -hmm. It won't hold the bolt. This is supposed to hold the bolt. And plus, if you put the the the, the lock washer against that, where it uh, goes through here, this is aluminum. Mm -hmm. It'll just end up cutting a hole through it. See. The lock washer, every time you lock it down, will be locking in the aluminum, which just will pull the aluminum off. It's got to be a metal washer against the aluminum. So these are good when we, after we get the wheel back on it. And they see they slide through real easy. Uh huh. So that's good. The lock washer's already yep. in there. Yep. Uh -huh. so I'm ready for the tire. Everything's clean, ready. The bearings are good. And my spacer's there. Uh, we don't know why they did that because maybe it wears out on the edge instead of wearing the edge out they could take this out and replace it probably a lot that's that's what we figured less expensive just replace yeah. that thin piece of metal right. than the whole thing there <laughs> maybe we just wipe this off so it won't make a mess because anything you leave on the outside it's just dirt's going to stick to it see yeah so that off Make 
just so people paint these. But don't let it under your wheel pants, you can never see it. <laughs> this primer, this is self etching primer, it does just the same thing. Like I said, one with, that goes to the inside. If you don't, that hit on the, you'd run out of threads. Mm -hmm. and this actually goes over the actual where the threads stop a little bit. I'll spin this. Tight and seated well. And now I'll look where my holes are. I know the holes in this go straight up and down. Uh huh. So let's tighten this a little bit. So if it doesn't line up, do you have to take it off and try to redo it, or? No, you just gotta find out. Even if it's on the loose sides, mm -hmm. you do it. But uh, now that's about up and down. I got my collar pin here. Short one. Yeah, now we'll go in the hole. Nice. A little cotter pen trick there. <laughs> Quite bad enough. Nice. See that one went through that time? Yeah. A lot of times what I do is I'll go like this. And lock it at the bend. And bend it back a little bit. Mm -hmm. This will go right on through. See it went right on through. Okay. I'll start to bend it. Besides bending it over, I'm pushing the head down in there a little bit farther. It helps lock it in better. See? So we're good. We don't have to cut anything off. that long because I can't wrap it around so I'll put it down just a little bit let's cut a little bit off see I'm trying to spin it with my hand it won't so, and that's good and you look at your tire Make sure it spins straight. It does. Switch sides, so. pull the bolts back. This is the hardest part right here getting these things lined up. And you snug them, you have to torque them real tight because uh, what happens to that? It pulls, it'll pull a thread in here. Oh, yeah. And it'll cause it to bulge up a little bit right at the end. And cause a gap. <laughs> now this is so loose now because I pushed the puck all the way back out. In. It'll tighten back up right. once we push the brake in. <laughs> Let's 
and you get to the point where the disc is too thin and the pads are too thin and actually the puck is too far out. Uh -huh. Once you get too far out, it wants to cock sideways because you see how it was made? Yeah. It's kind of real short. I mean, it's got the pin, but after you get so far out, it will start caulking sideways and start to leak. So that's one thing. That's why they got a dimension for the your brake pads uh -huh. and your disc thickness. Huh. And that's what Anna did. You see the, the, the uh, she actually wrote it on the disc. Yeah. She what the, the thickness is mm -hmm. because there's a minimum you can go. And that's why she's checked that because that's part of the structure. Okay. Nice. This is good. All you have to do is, uh, actually, this looks like it's got enough in it. What's if you it? want to grease the fittings, all these look like they got plenty of grease in them. Uh huh. But if you want to, you can. Your uh, your uh, struts, struts tubes. Yep. They're nice and clean, and they're not scarred. But y'all just did those, right? Yep. Yeah, I just did okay. That. And just to be safe. Uh huh. I'm gonna come around on that side. <laughs> I want you to get up in the air. Uh-huh. And we're gonna bleed this side just to be sure. And plus it gets the stuff that goes bad first uh -huh. is what's down here in the silt the caliper. Yeah. Because it gets the hottest. It's the only thing that sees heat. And that's where it goes bad first. And not saying we're flushing the whole system, but we're getting the bad stuff out of the cool. caliper itself. All right, so, so you can go. I'll jump you, back up in the plane, and then you tell me when. All right, you just ready? Okay. Okay, start pumping. Okay. Got it. Foot off, yep. Okay, what's off? Cool. All right, so I've disassembled, uh, well, I didn't actually, uh, my mechanic disassembled this here uh, while I was working on a few other things. This is the air box, and this is where the filter lies, and as you can see, it gets real nasty in here. So basically, the next steps, clean all this stuff out. Um, it gets disgusting because everything gets sucked in here. Let me show you. Filter real quick. Walk over here. That is, this is nasty. Well, they, it's, it's sticky anyway. Oh, yeah? They put sticky stuff on there to catch the dirt. Oh, But okay. it's a little bit... See how... Like this color right here? Do you see right here? Yeah. That's just actually dirt in there. It's made mm. to catch the dirt. Yeah, it just goodness. And we're gonna clean that and we'll then replace it. that. Uh -huh. Yeah, clean take the this. Little... Yeah, yeah, take that. Put this in the uh, that there in this too. All and, right. Uh, hey, go ahead and uh, finish taking that screw out right there. All right. Oh. Uh, like just be careful with this gasket. Uh huh. We'll put some other stuff around the other side where it makes up. Cool. All right. I'm gonna do that and we'll see what it looks like. And all clean and nice. So I will show you what it looks like when it's put all together. The almost finished product here. There you go. Put some new felt in there, new filter. Cleaned all that junk out inside. So now we just get a secure it there and pop it right back on the plane again. Woo! We are back from the annual. We are done! So, for those who remember, there was a big crack on there. We took the time to 
take that crack out. So it's nice, reinforced, smooth, repainted. Uh, I had some damage up here. Nice, smooth, and repainted. Um, so what we found out from the prop, uh, the little center cap when we took out the uh, center cap, uh, we found a bunch of sludge, which you saw. Um, I have minor pitting, little tiny like pits in there, and that's what uh, we have to look out for and watch. The AD basically says, if you die tested uh, and you see any cracks, then it's basically game over. But um, every hundred hours uh, or every year, whichever comes first, that's basically the gist of this. Uh, we're going to have to do the dye test, and uh, it's also kind of a good idea just to clean all that junk out anyway for the reasons stated before. Um, but every 100 hours uh, or every year, whatever comes first, and then I have to do that for up to 12 years. After 12 years, that's it. Um, once, the, once you see pitting on there, regardless of cracks or not, um, you that's 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 done so you have to re either you know rebuild the engine or get a new engine in here or something to that effect you can't uh, you can't have an engine with that pitting um, also refinish the edge there of course and then uh, another cool thing is I didn't know but the um, the cover here once you take it off it has a tag and this is for a uh, this is for a metal uh, prop and with that, the tag actually says um, to put light oil on there. Um, so <laughs> that's something I wasn't doing. And what I found out was if you uh, lubricate this with that light oil, it actually conditions and staves off the uh, corrosion of the aluminum. So it's a thin layer and uh, it gets more and more brittle as time goes by and by uh, putting that on there, it uh, it prolongs the the prop. I don't know if that's true. I don't care if it's true, because the tag on my prop says it's true. So I will believe that, and I will condition this with light oil um, before flight. It takes all of ten seconds. I'll just do it on the pre-flight. Plus, you're supposed to be touching and feeling this prop before every flight anyway. So why not? Um, everything else looked good. So we finished everything, everything looked fine. Uh, there was nothing really uh, of concern. Uh, there's nothing really uh, in there that, you know, every, all the ADs check out, everything's good to go. Uh, we've lubricated everything. We, as you saw before, took the tires off, checked them, relubricated all the bearings and all that type of jazz, and then uh, cleaned all the stuff. Um, now it's up to me to clean the bugs, but you know, everywhere that you can't see that isn't physically visible right now has been cleaned because why not? Uh, the bill came in and it's substantially less because it was an owner's assist. This is for people who are interested in doing that type of stuff. You have to weigh out the benefits to it, of course. If you want to uh, <clears throat> take your time, uh, if it's worth it to you, to do that uh, owner assist annual, by all means. If not, then, you know, don't do it. But good for another year. I'll, of course, you know, pre-flight, check the plane, do all the owner stuff that I can do until then. But uh, good for another year, 100 hours. So there we go. I'm close to that. Hopefully uh, you guys got something from it. And until next time, see you.